Welcome back, everybody, and happy St. Patrick's Day uh, today. If you're watching live anyway, it's St. Patrick's Day. If you if you didn't notice, the river behind me, the Chicago River, it's green. And they actually did that this year, along with changing the Welcome to Las Vegas sign green. All the light bulbs, too, around it. I'm in Vegas. Redwood Mets over there in Chicago. I know a lot of you guys are in Chicago. And I... I Thanks for thanks for sticking around, guys. Thanks for coming along for the ride today. Welcome back to Mob Vlog. Hey, Red. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Fantastic. And uh, I'm not in Chicago. I'm in Panama City Beach. Oh, what the hell? What the hell am I saying? Chicago? Yeah, that's right. We both are from Chicago, but We're you're not in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. That's right. You're we in fled. Panama City. We fled for our lives. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, all right. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. In in honor of St. Patrick's Day, a little Irish coffee, okay? <laughs> a little Irish coffee. So Chicago, Panama City. What's the difference? What is it? A thousand miles? <laughs> about. About. I get a kick out of it, though, because the sun is shining, it's 82 degrees out, and I have all the windows open. <laughs> nice. That's nice. It's it's pretty it's pretty nice in Vegas, too, today. It's not very bad. And uh, we're letting some people join in the room right now as you guys are coming into this uh, podcast. If you're watching it live, happy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, I just wanted to ask you, Red, did you hear the joke about the two Irishmen walked out of a bar? No. Yeah, and you never will. <laughs> They never leave. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just sweep up around them. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I have some Irish in me, so it's all good. Anyway, um, so you guys looked at the thumbnail, and you clicked on it, and you came in here, and you're wondering what are we going to talk about today uh, I don't regarding... I in here, Adam. <laughs> we got about 50 people right now. I don't see him in here. Nobody's chatted or anything. Oh, yeah. You got to click on the comment on the top left side of your screen there, Red. Click on the uh, comment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, we got that. The, Yeah. They're out there. Cindy's like like banging shirt, Red. <laughs> but I, I can't comment back to you. I'm sorry. Well, um, it's it's all it's all good. Uh, That's okay. Red, I can talk. You can, you can read the comments. <laughs> I, I, I want you to know, um, Rusty... Rusty Shackleford, that you resent that joke that I made, and I really hey, want you to know you from, the, the no, jokes. from from the bottom of my heart, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty's kidding around anyway. So, <laughs> wow, you drank like a fish, then you found something much better. Well, I I used to drink water, then I found out that fish, uh, you know, they do their business in it. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> There's an old saying. A lot of my friends used to say it. <laughs> Water's for washing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, it's for washing your hands. Hey, I just read it that whiskey in Irish actually means water of life is what it, <laughs> it does. So there you go. You know, it's uh anyway. Okay, so enough enough kibitz in here. Uh, that's Jewish, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's touch them all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's touch them all on their tukas, which is Jewish too. So, or Yiddish, rather. Anyway, uh, good morning, guys. Luminous Grin, Walter, Philip, John Allen, uh, Nick Castanello, Outfit Boss, Tim Foster, Cindy Workman, Mo, uh, uh, Christopher Moltisanti. Moltisanti. See, I'm getting better right. at these. Philip Wright. Hey, welcome everybody. Hank Shrev. Uh, welcome guys. It's good to see you. Frank Livingston. It's great to see you guys. Uh, Jesus Rivera. We're going to talk about some mob spot spots in the South side, buddy. Uh, but what we're going to start with today is Joseph Lombardo. So red, how, uh, t first off, you worked with Joseph Lombardo. You knew him. You used Quite to well. go over to Kozo's well. place and all the thing. Well, so no, please, yeah, I I actually, that's one of the guys I got in the car with. We actually went down to Taylor Street. I mean, I knew the guy. I mean, mm -hmm. I was, it wasn't like getting in the car with Frank Schweitz. <laughs> you were safe when you're next to Joey. <laughs> you were, huh? Oh, yeah. So, Joe, was Joe, uh, was he anything like Frank? No. 
Okay, so not no, a, I, you know the easiest way to explain that too is in his later the time when I knew him, when I met when I met Joey, he wasn't really he didn't seem to be the kind of person that would do anything violent. He uh -huh. seemed to be the kind of person that would tell somebody else to do something violent. I think he, he made his bones or his first murder in 1964. It was Manny Scar, and he used to own the Sahara Inn. And he lived at 3800 Lakeshore Drive, high rise building on the 14th floor. And it was never solved. Uh, one of the major suspects, it was on the bequest of uh, Phil Aldericio because he was part of the crew. But they made the. Uh, suggestions that they couldn't find it out they the suspects were tony spalaccio or joey lombardo so one of the two right okay i believe it was joey you think so huh oh yeah um you told he me about rose after that he became a rising star after that <laughs> you told me about a building that he put up correct lombardo or am i confusing him with twice you're now? confusing him <laughs> A little more of that Irish that coffee. Guy there. Out, that guy stands out in your mind a little bit. You know? For some reason, I don't know why that is. Okay, so I did uh, actually. Cozo built that building, uh, the complex at uh, uh, Acton Racine or, or Grandin Racine, and it went all the way through to almost like uh, uh, Kennedy Expressway. But he, he built that compound basically so we could all meet there. Joey spent all his time there. He didn't invite people to his house. He met him at the compound. Okay. And uh, that was at Grand and Racine, you said? Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm it's kind of a famous I'm... place. If you go by it, the wall's still there. I mean, the walls are up around it. You say Grand and Racine, right? Right. It doesn't look like there's much. Uh... There's a brick wall that goes all the way. It's on the west side of Racine and the north side of Grand. Am I at the right intersection? No, because I'd see the building. That says Grand Avenue. Oh, that's Grand Avenue in Racine, Wisconsin. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back three for three wrong. today. I'm batting three for three today. Unbelievable. Okay, so anyway, back to, to Lombardo. People that know the area would know. Okay, gotcha. Um, so back to Lombardo. Um, you said he had a... He was, well, first off, why'd they call him the clown? And what was his nickname besides the clown? He had some other nicknames. He had Well, he had Joe Palooka because he used to be a boxer, like most of the outfit guys. He was in the ring at different times. And... You know, he, he, I guess he was a formidable boxer. He liked boxing. He promoted boxing. He mm -hmm. promoted uh, Mostadini. He, that was one of his boxers. But um, other nicknames, the clown naturally. Everybody knows him by that. <clears throat> because he, 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 in order to get out of situations where the public was looking at him, or even when he was just sitting around, when he'd be sitting mm -hmm. on a chaise lounge and puffing on a cigar, and he'd blow smoke rings. Now, this is something that may be interesting to some people. But he would blow smoke rings up in the air. And he'd see how many smoke rings he could get, how big they were, how they came out small, and if he could keep them in the same place without the wind blowing them, right? And one day he was laying back on the chaise lounge, and I looked at him, like calm collected he was. And he's blowing these smoke rings, and he's just in thought. That's all he's doing is thinking. And so I looked at him and says, I said to him, you know, you're just like a Cheshire cat <laughs> out of a cartoon, right? And he looked at me and he just smiled and went back to blowing the rings. So people that say you couldn't make a joke about Joey, it depends on who you are. If you're talking about business or something like that, yeah, I don't think he'd take jokes too well. Mm -hmm. If he called you a mutt, you don't turn around and say something back to him. <laughs> he had a reason for saying that. So you said when... Um... The reason that uh, when Frank Collada was sent to Vegas, he said that Lombardo came up to him and said, hey, I hear you're uh, moving to Vegas. You said that's something he would have said, right? No, he said, I, I hear you're moving. And he said, what? 
And he said, yeah, you're moving out to Las Vegas. <laughs> that's, that's, that's when he had, his, he had his disco, I believe it was on Harlem Avenue. Right. I'm not mistaken. But it was on Harlem Avenue. Hmm. And uh, I guess <laughs> it, it's the way he, it's his sense of humor. He'd walk but, up to you and say something and you'd say, what? And then he'd clarify it with some direction. Huh. Hey, guys, if you're just getting in, hit the like button. Be sure to hit the like button if you guys are just coming into the room. Uh, and also, if you haven't hit that uh, prescribe button down there, be sure to do that, too. Um, so, Red, what uh, uh, what else? I mean, how else? Uh, what other things happened with him? You used to run into him over at Kozo's, right? I ran into him a lot of places. Mm -hmm. uh, one time I was out on, uh, I had this product, Rush. And uh, Alva Johnson Rogers, Johnny Rogers, had blown town. And uh, he kept all the machinery. He kept all my, my plant. He took my whole plant over. And so Joey called me, or actually called Phil Amato. And I went to see him. And he said, what happened? And I said, the guy came in, meaning Johnny Rogers. And he told me, he says, my guy told me you're not supposed to come around here anymore, meaning Marshall Cofano. And you're out. Stay away from here. So I didn't run to anybody. I just did what I was told. I left. Mar and when Rogers is gone, Joyce says, where's the money from the rush? <laughs> and so he came looking for me. So anyway, he sent Phil Amato with me around to buy different things. Mm -hmm. And we went out to Mannheim Road. We weren't going all the porn shops, all the pornography shops. And we went out to Mannheim Road to Sammy Sicola's. And on the side of the road, at night, this is nighttime, one o'clock in the morning, two, three, something like that in the morning. There was Joey. We didn't know it was Joey, but there was a man in a, like a, a Navy pea coat and a ski cap on the side of the road. And uh, I had stopped there for, because it was close to something I had to stop. And he walked up to the car and knocked on my window on my side and said, hey, how you doing? He had a smile on his face. Joey had an overbite on his teeth. Even though he had this cap on, the ski cap, navy blue ski cap, and he looked dark like a shadow. Um, you could tell it was him. And so he walked up to us. We didn't you know, bother him in any way. And I didn't know who it was at first, but uh, he, uh, he said hi, and uh, we left. And on the way home, uh, Phil Amato looked at me and he said, uh, he said, oh, we did it now. We walked in on something. He said, we're dead men. <laughs> I said, for what? We didn't see anything. You know? mm -hmm. and, and so he, he, he made a big deal out of it. Later on, I was talking to Joey about it. And uh, uh, he had mentioned something about his rolling crap game. And so I said uh, something about it. I don't know the exact comment I made about it, but uh, he asked me how I did on, on, on Mannheim Road with Sammy Scola. And I said, the guy bought 20 cases. Phil Amato told him he'd like if he bought 10 cases, 10 gross, in a, there's a gross in the case. He went and bought 20 cases. And he said, well, that's all right. I want Phil to go with you from now on. And I said, uh, okay. And he says, uh, I just got through my rolling crap game. <laughs> he said, I was on my way home. <laughs> Okay, everybody, uh, you know, uh, Dubbed Explains just said Lombardo looks like the guy from No Country for Old Men, in case you haven't seen that movie. <laughs> he does, he okay. does except he doesn't put have it, the old All right, put it in the comments, yes or no. Do you think Lombardo looks like this guy from uh, No Country for Old Men? He has I'll, the cheeks. I want to know. Yeah. And, Antoine Shakur, I think is his name, right? Antoine Shakur, uh, French actor. Um, no cleft on the chin, though. No, no cleft on the chin. You're right. He doesn't. All right. So anyway, <laughs> um, yes. So, all right. So back to uh, Lombard. The way I remember him. The way okay. I remember him. And I got to tell you, that's funny, too, because I was at Family Secrets trial, mm -hmm. and they asked me, I was on the stand, and they asked me, they said, uh, do you see Mr. Lombardo in the courtroom? And I looked around. I really couldn't tell who was who. There was okay. a bunch of defendants over there. And... They showed me a picture. They brought me a picture to him. 
And I looked at the picture and I look around the courtroom. Joey stands up and he's got a smile on his face. And he looks over at me and he winks. He winks at me when he looks at me. And I said, that's him right over there. But he looked a whole lot better. The last time I saw him, the courtroom started laughing. The, the lawyers were laughing. Everybody was laughing. Finally, Judge Zagel, you know, said, calm down. <laughs> Order in the court. Uh for those of you that are out there that may be asking to, Red just mentioned a product. Uh, Rush is the product. And you said this was your product that yeah. you, you created? I it. There you go, right there. That's okay. it. Well, what, 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 just what in the hell is Rush? And I see they, even, they, they have Super Rush. They have Gold Rush. What is they didn't, this? We didn't have any of that then. <laughs> okay. Uh, the original one that you had up there is what we had, or I invented and it was a, um, before that, it was legal to go to a drugstore and get poppers, which were a popper. You take it and you snap in front of, the firemen carried them. And you snap them in front of uh, paramedics. You snap them in front of somebody's nose. and it. Mm. But it's a, a vascular dilator. Amyl nitrate, right? Arteries. Pardon? Amyl nitrates? The, the poppers were. The, re, the way I got around is, is I went to the library and I looked up different nitrates. And if you change the alcohol, instead of amyl alcohol, mm -hmm. you use butyl alcohol or N-butyl alcohol, you come up with butyl nitrate. Smells the same. Everything's the same on it. It still gives you that rush, so to speak, that would bring you back if you were unconscious. <clears throat> also, they did that to see if somebody was really unconscious so that they were, you know, playing uh, possum. They stick a popper in front that's, of them. See, that's what I recall. My father was a, a fireman. He was also a paramedic, and I remember him. One day, they were. It was like a, it was a glass. It was a glass capsule inside of a mesh. A little yeah, mesh. like a mesh. Yeah, and he said that he that you would crack those if somebody was faking, like they passed out, they fainted. You put that There's under their like nose. There's only like drops in there. There's oh, only yeah? like two drops in there. The huh. stuff is really volatile. I remember smelling. My dad it was like, what is it? You know, so I know what it smelled Terrible like. Smell. Well, that's this, but this is the same father who's like, hey, you want to see what mercury is? Put your hand out. Let's put some mercury in your hand. <laughs> I mean, like, here, you want some hydrochloric acid? Mercury. Let's <laughs> let's melt some hammerheads, you know? I mean, yeah. So, uh, you know, it was very hands-on with my father, I should say, you know, as far as, um, yeah, gauze in a glass tube, Ron Frey. Hey, Luminous Grin, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate uh, the, the uh, support there, buddy. Um, <laughs> really appreciate it, man. So, uh, you believe the band? Oh, was the band Rush named after that? No, I, yeah, it must have been named after that. It, it had the to be because Rush came out. I, I started doing Rush in 1960. 1973, 1974. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when did the Rush band come? Uh, the band called Rush come out. Um, boy, does anybody know that? Uh, band yeah, does anybody know that out in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> I never heard there was a band, so I'm not familiar with it. Let's see. It was formed in 1968. Getty Lee. It was a Canadian rock band. It must have been Rush. formed about the Rush that you get in life, or something like that. Then. Okay, so maybe it wasn't after the... Uh, no, no. I'm not reading... I mean, not that Wikipedia is 100% right, but I'm skimming through the pa Wikipedia page right now, and I'm not seeing anything that mentions anything about the it. The reason I named it Rush was because it gave you a rush. I mean, it gave you a total rush. Like a head rush? Oh, yeah. Like when you smoke a cigarette oh, or something? afterwards, it goes bong, bong, bong. When, you, when your uh, capillaries and your everything in your arteries start to shrink you get a headache a oh, bad sounds like fun so why the hell would anybody want that <laughs> they said that it was a good aphrodisiac <laughs> okay porn business i got it i never used right. it i didn't try it i just the smell oh. of it alone got me <laughs> um here, I know I didn't ask that question, uh, Patrick, uh, although we are on, on Lombardo today, but uh, the Pappas uh, girl that Frank Schweiss killed, was she related to the Cook County Treasurer? Do you know there was a Pappas that was a yes, Cook County Treasurer? Yes, she was. And she was also, her brother 
was a um, Chicago police officer. And she had an uncle that was a Chicago police officer also. Okay. So, yeah, uh, to answer your question, Patrick, that is uh, that is very true. She came from a nice family in Greek town. Huh. Okay. Um, so, Lombardo, you said he had an overbite. I saw that goofy video. Everybody's seen it of him going through uh, Woolworths. And he's, uh, you know, clowning around and somebody's, you know, and by the way, that camera that they're walking at him with, that's not like a VHS camera. That's somebody with a, an actual real, real camera following him around. Right. Cause that was, it was the, the homemade super eights they used to have homemade super eight. They yeah. had regular eights and then they had super eights, which had sound. And I believe that camera had sound. So it was a super eight. Ah, uh, Okay. So he, he acts kind of goofy in the store there, uh, you know, where he's kind of, he's making these funny faces and, uh, 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 you know, and uh, that's what he was like, though? Yeah. If he didn't want people around him, he didn't want people to watch him. And he was obviously trying to duck that person in a public store. He didn't walk up to him, punch him in the head. He just, he'd make goofy faces at him. That's all. Like, you like the picture? <laughs> Take my picture. <laughs> well, there's that one picture of him like this. Right? Yeah. You know? Matter of fact, Allie was sitting downstairs and I had that on the screen because I was going to use it as the thumbnail. And she said, is that a picture of you? She thought it was a picture of me from when I was younger. I said, what the hell? <laughs> anyway. He was a um, clown. He was a clown. <clears throat> yeah, guys. Hit the like button. Smash the like button, guys. Get the video out there. Uh, Outfit Boss says, hey, Red, do you think Joe Lombardo killed Alan Dorfman? No, Frank Schweiss killed Alan Dorfman. Okay. And it was probably at Joe Lombardo's bequest that he did it. But um, I know for a fact that Frank Schweiss killed Alan Dorfman. And I won't name the other person because he's still alive. Okay. So. Uh, Frank told me he did. It was on videotape. Okay. This was all going to come out of Family Secrets, but Frank got sick and he didn't stand trial. <laughs> well, can't, you, brain cancer. Well, you said Frank killed like eighty people and didn't get but caught. I know. Didn't get, but didn't I know. get caught for a single one. And eighty, no. by the way, everybody commented on that in the comments in the video and were like, eighty, it's an incredible number. And it is. It's a lot of people to kill. I mean And I found out something since then. Um uh, I was curious, but uh, Bill Romer, uh, in his, one of his books, uh, defined Schweiss as uh, uh, a bicoastal hitman. Uh, he'd kill anybody for anything. Hmm. He didn't care which state it was in. Didn't have to be in Chicago. And he worked with Joey Hansen, too, out in uh, Arizona. Uh, Red, do, you, uh, do people realize that the police had evidence bloody glove to the Seifert murder in their evidence room for over 20 something years. Yes, I do. I knew all about it. Yeah. No, and it wasn't the Seifert murder. That was the, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. I can't remember his name. Nick Calabrese did the murder mm -hmm. and it was, uh, it was, uh, it was in family secrets that bloody glove. It was there. Farrakhan. John Farrakhan, Big John. Okay. Uh, he went to murder him, and he got shot himself, and he took the bloody glove off. And mm -hmm. that that was there. But it wasn't from the Seaford murder, no. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't at all? No. Not, okay. So, um, John Allen says, I grew up in Cleveland, and the mob ruled Italians with the Irish and Polish coming in second. Lots of ethnic groups in those days. Yeah, Cleveland, um, you know, I'm sure it had its own neighborhoods just like Chicago did. Heck, the area I grew up was mainly Polish and Hungarians, and uh, uh, and then there was a smattering of Irish, I guess you'd say, in, 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 the, in my neighborhood anyways. When well, Chicago itself, Chicago itself had more Polish immigrants come to that city than any other place in the United States. It was the really? largest Polish population. Really? I did not, I was not aware of that. More people That's... immigrated to Chicago from Poland 
than any place in the United States. Hmm. Interesting. That's really interesting. Um, Philip Wright said Gianni Russo was the first Bozo the Clown of the Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> And he still is. <laughs> Johnny. Oh, God. All right, VL's Corner, Mr. Wemet and your experience. Well, okay, you got a Mr. Wemet, huh? Uh -oh. Not even a Mr. Wemet. <laughs> VL's Corner, in your experience, what's the difference between Chicago and uh, New York guys? Uh, basically, the New York guys had their own little groups or families, like mm -hmm. Chicago had crews. They'd have crews in their families, but they all argued. And to get them all together to agree on something was like trying to get uh, 12 rabbis to agree on a subject in a synagogue. It just didn't happen. Chicago had it together. When they tell something in one group or one crew that you have to come together or the leader of each crew has to come together, they would come together for a meeting. And they mm -hmm. did what they were told. Or if they went for the okay to do something, they would have a sit down with the boss and they got the okay to kill somebody. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Decibalis Rex says, I live in Romania and here the mafia is our government. Hey, Decibalis Rex, check it out. Same it thing here. <laughs> it certainly is. It certainly is. Uh, Brett, welcome, man. Gianni is too tan to be bozo. You are correct. You are hey, correct. Brett, how you doing, guy? And Laura Lee, happy St. Paddy's Day. For those of you just getting in here, hit the smash button. And if you haven't, hit the uh, hit the uh, uh, subscribe, the prescribe button. I almost said it the wrong way. Uh, happy St. Paddy's Day to all you folks. Yeah, happy St. Paddy's Day, everyone. Husey67, Gianni Russo designed Noah's Ark. He did. He helped build it with him. <laughs> he looks old enough. He looks old enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get serious. Charlie Panarella. Uh, does Red think Tony Spilatro would have been killed if Lombardo was not in the can? Do you no. think he could or would have had to, had to sit down and tried to save him? Yes. So you don't think t Tony would have been killed if, if Joey no. was out? No. Wouldn't have happened, huh? No. Lombardo had too much pull. Um don't forget, he was street boss when he went in. Um, if he hadn't have gone away on that Pendorf thing uh, in 82, I believe it was, uh, no, it wouldn't have happened. He had enough, hmm. uh, he had enough uh, influence to go to um, Ayupa mm -hmm. or even go over his head and go to... Um, Tony Ricardo. Okay. And I uh, believe Jackie Cerrone was boss, you know, at that time anyway. Yeah. But those guys had all made up their minds. But being locked up in prison, mm -hmm. they're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything. So if Lombardo would have been out, I'm sure he could have stopped it. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. I hope that that, uh, that answers your question, Charlie. Blake Alexander. Uh it's good to see you, buddy. I'm glad you're in here. Blake's a, a friend of mine from way back. He uh, uh, did uh, magic when he was uh, younger, and now he sings and he's got his hands in all kinds of things. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Ron Frey, what did one clown say to the other during sex? Does this look funny to you? <laughs> you know, last time I saw two clowns doing it. No, Ron, last time I saw two clowns doing it, you know what one said to the other? said, does this taste funny to you? <laughs> <laughs> poor taste, poor taste. All right, guys. So, um, wow. The boss, um, the boss, Joey Doves, would have saved Tony. You think he would have saved Tony, too, if he was uh, around, uh, Joey Doves? Are you yeah. Okay? Well, I don't know. He was he was locked up. He was locked up because of the skim. Okay. At the time. So if he was out, I don't know. I really don't. I don't know what his reaction would be. But I do know if Joey was out, that he could have if he could have gone over Ayupa and gone okay. directly. Notice all the pictures. Uh, or that Last Supper picture. The people that are sitting at, when Joey's in a suit. And all the other guys are sitting casual. 
Oh, you're talking about the Last Supper photo. Yes. Uh -huh. That was when he was being made street boss. Okay. To settle all arguments on the street. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, uh, Renee P. Indy had huge meat packing business close to Chicago. Anybody run Indy? I think she means, Indi or he means Indianapolis. Not Indianapolis, no, that I knew of. We kind of, that was kind of an open territory, but I think Chicago stayed out of there. There was a okay. lot of Cleveland people in there. Okay, but not in uh, Indy. No. Okay. Uh, so, John DeFranza was an FBI informant. Was this confirmed, and was he an informant for how long in the 90s and 2000s? It was confirmed to me uh, during the Family Secrets trial by Mitch mm -hmm. Mars and John Scully and the other attorney, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, forgot his name. I always forget that guy till after I'm off the air. But anyway, he's a nice guy. But it was confirmed to me that he was an informant. Did I talk about it? I was never asked. Okay. Uh, how long? Frank I don't know. I don't know how long. I don't know the details of his informant capacity. I'm going to get to your question here, Frank Livingston, in just a second. But uh, Kevio says that uh, San Fran also had a lot of meatpacking business going on over there. Okay. Yeah, they did. San Francisco <laughs> Red. Come on, Ring. Come on, Ring. Right over there. What the right hell, man? Right over my head, guy. Okay? <laughs> Ring. All right. So, anyway, I'm. I got Frank, God. Frank Livingston wants to know where exactly were you the moment that you found out uh, that Tony and Michael were found? In my bedroom upstairs. Uh, the minute they went missing, I grabbed a bottle of scotch and went upstairs and locked the door because I knew they were gone. That wow. was the only time Tony ever came into town where he didn't stop by and see me first. Hmm. It's the only time, huh? The only time that I recall that he was in Chicago because he used to stop. We used to talk about it and say, hey, I'm in the town. I thought he'd stop by and see you. Mm -hmm. And he was the only guy that didn't call me first. He used to just come in unexpectedly. Yeah. Uh, you think it was because uh, Carl says because he was bringing too much heat and is in the press every week? But there you go. Uh, I'm sure that contributed to it. Uh -huh. I'm sure it contributed a lot to it. But also, um, I think the main reason was that if he were, all these other guys were gone. If he were to have survived, he was much stronger than DeFranzio. He was much stronger than certain other people. And they, some of these other people had their own crews. And they were running things. And he would just come in and, like Ferriola. He wasn't mm -hmm. he was a present long lived, but he would come in and take over everything. I mean, he would he would just proclaim himself boss and say, You want to go to war? Okay, we'll go to war. Right. And he would have had Schweiss with him. I mean, he would have had the whole Grand Avenue crew with him. Hmm. They go where the money goes. That's it. Well, of course. That's where everybody goes. Philip Wright. <laughs> <laughs> True. Red, does the clown, Joey, have children, grandchildren who are in the, the life, or is that more of the past? It's in the past. Okay. I mean, Joe Jr. was um, involved in uh, unions, but he never did any heavy work or anything like that. Joe provided for his family. He lost a daughter, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's terrible. That's... Died a terrible death. Yeah, that's terrible. Well, he locked he's, up with parts. Super No max. teeth. Uh, several surgeries. Uh, I believe his mind was gone. And a lot of people got, they're very confused about that because they say, oh, he went to Florence. Well, before he went to Florence, he went to Butler in uh, North Carolina. And he was there. And he would have been okay there, except he went to another inmate and told the other inmate, I want this judge killed. The inmate gets on a phone, talks about it to somebody else, and bang, they put him in segregation. Oh. Then he got moved out to Florence. Oh, that's no good. 
Well, he's in a nice medical facility. He had it made. But he knew he was never coming out, and he figured out, I want to whack the judge. Jeez. Do you ever have any dealings with the wise guys out of San Jose or San Francisco? Never. Okay. That answers that question. Uh, Cindy. Cindy. So duchess gets antsy whenever red and i sit and talk like this and if he, red's not paying attention to duchess she starts to to whine a little bit but it's not because she has to go to the outside or anything she just that's i asked red about that before look she's walking around behind you come here <laughs> come here she's looking for attention uh red did you know jimmy the weasel no no i did not friday out um he was from Cleveland. So, Jimmy Freddie was from Cleveland. Let me pull let me pull this up so that you guys can see this. As a matter of fact, Schweiss went out to kill him because he had killed somebody without authorization. And you know, they just couldn't get it together between Cleveland and Chicago. And mm -hmm. so uh he claimed that he saw Schweiss. I saw his 302s. He was an FBI. And when he rolled, he was an FBI, FBI informant. But he said he saw Schweiss, and the minute he saw him, he was clocking him. Schweiss was clocking him. He went straight to a payphone, called the FBI, and said, come and get me. He was deathly afraid of Schweiss. Wow. Um, and Schweiss was Joey's bulldog. I mean... If he told him to do something, it was done. Same as Aldericio. When Aldericio told Schweiss to do something, he did it. But that all kind of came over. I mean, everybody knew that Joey was Sicilian. Joey was the boss. Right. Um, outfit boss, you asked, Red, do you know when Joe Lombardo got made in the outfit? We just talked about this a minute ago. I threw the link to this. I believe page. it was in 1964. And it, it was this picture right here that we talked about and this is where joe's standing in the back in a suit and all the other bosses are sitting down this now is, that's uh, not where he was made that's where he became street boss our street boss rather yes okay all right i got that they confused. told all the other individuals yep. in that picture Accardo wanted everybody to know he was his man on the street he was going to settle all arguments that picture was taken in 1975. mm-hmm Joey was made in 1964. Okay. And what what uh, where was he made? Do you know? No, I don't. No, you just know that it was made in 64. I was I wasn't even around. I lived in Cicero then. I didn't know anything about the mob period. And then I joined the Marine Corps. So. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Uh so um Let's see here. Damian Craig, we're going to take a, some questions, kind of do an open forum for the uh, last uh, 15, 20 minutes that we have here. And then uh, if you guys are just coming in, hit the like button, smash the like button. Uh, this is uh, uh, very important. And also hit the prescribe button if you guys are just uh, just uh, finding this uh, right now. Uh, it's a prescribe on his channel. It's, it's a subscribe on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and guys, you can uh, you can also go check out uh, Red has a channel as well on YouTube, and it is uh, it is growing, is growing. So if you guys uh, get a chance, go over there and check it out, and um, you know hit the button. I have a lot of videos on there. It's like seventy videos up there. Yeah, you have about seventy now. That's that is right. Uh, so let's see here, Steve Cutler. Is the rumor true Tony whacked Sam Giancana? We talked about this the other week, too. I believe it is. Other people believe it was Butch Blassie. Uh, why would Butch Blassie? This is my reasoning. First of all, Frank Schweiss told me he did. That's number one. Okay. Second of all, when I look at all these other facts that other people pull up about Blassie coming back after the party, mm -hmm. or they had a get-together there, he left and came back. Why did he go through the basement to the back door? Why didn't he come through the front door? And who was he making the sausages and peppers for? Somebody that was just there for dinner or a new guest? Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That's my reasoning. Sure, that makes sense. Wow. But there are other people that will argue the difference that say, 
Lassie was there. And I wasn't there, so I really don't know. All I know mm -hmm. is I was told it, and it makes sense to me. And Schweiss okay. never lied to me that I know of. Nor hmm. the FBI. They fact-checked everything. Yeah, Husey saying Butch Blasey. A lot of people believe that. Yeah. But we all weren't there. We really don't know. We didn't see it. Hmm. Did the gun come from um, Tammy and me trail? Um, uh, it was a, a 22. Did it come from down there? Same place where Schweiss was? Yes. But guess what? Other people bought guns down in Florida too. Down in Miami. Yeah. Wow. So you can't pin it down to that. Uh, Chuck, read the description of the video, Chuck Painter, and uh, you will read who uh, Red is. And uh, Adam Cram, how do we get rid of these rioters? Bad for business. They were smashing out the windows and destroying businesses in L.A. and Charlotte, many other cities again this weekend. I, I you know, I'd love to have an answer. The local but... police, wherever you live, in some places, decided they're not going to bother them. So mm -hmm. what can you do? Move. Yeah, it's about that's about what you can do. That is exactly what you can do. Um, you if can, you don't like it where you're at, that's why we have a big country. This isn't like Europe where you have to have a passport to go from one place to another. Just move to another state. Yeah. Where it's that's... more friendly towards you. Where I live, we don't have any riots. We don't have any demonstrators. We don't even have anybody out for a Martin Luther King Day parade. <laughs> I think they had one. Two people showed up. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, uh, Husey has a point. Gianni Russo says he was there. He likes sausage and peppers. <laughs> and that's a fact. That's a fact right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Sam left the door open for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you ever meet Harry Aylman? Outfit boss is asking that. No, I never met Harry at all. I saw uh -huh. him, but I never met him. Hmm. Okay. So you never met him. Uh, well, Victor Hubler, uh, well, does this, this the German have a habit of shooting the men in the Z5 six times? Yes, his, his saying that he told me was, I like to put one in the leg and seven in the head. In other words, cripple him so he can't run. Uh -huh. And also, he had a piece of lead in his leg from being shot. Uh -huh. So he wasn't very good at running himself. He didn't want him to get away. So he dropped him with one shot in the leg and then yeah. seven in the head. That's what he told me. Jeez. That's how he killed uh, Paul Gonski. Huh. Same thing That's with Alan Dorfman. Hmm. William Romer uh, said that uh, Butch Blasi, in his Tony Accardo book, it was Butch Blasi. I don't Romer. agree with that because I looked it up and what Romer, I knew Bill, I knew Bill Romer, mm -hmm. um, Bill Romer, uh, Butch Blasi was an FBI informant and he said, and Bill Romer said he believed that even when he died, he never, he said he didn't do it because they talked back and forth. Mm -hmm. But even when he died, Bill Romer said, he didn't believe that he did it because he told him he didn't. And he never lied to him before. There were things he wouldn't answer, but there were some things that he did answer. And that was one of them. Okay, so... Uh, Check Red, that out, right? Check that out and you'll find out it's true. Okay. Um, was there anyone you feared or avoided? You seem to be on good terms with everyone. Uh... <laughs> The only ones, the only one that I really feared and avoided was in my early days, Kurt Hansen. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of him. Uh, avoiding? No, I never avoided anyone. I didn't. Okay. The only reason I didn't like Kurt was he was shooting at me all the time. <laughs> I, got, I got tired of getting shot at. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, come on. Or his buddy, big, at you. Bob, big Bob Davids, when I was in my GTO and I, I ran into, into the lake, but... Uh, I was afraid anybody pulls up me next to you with a shotgun, puts it out the window, saw off shotgun. You're going to be afraid of him. You're, you're going to avoid him too. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. 
Uh, Bob wants to know who ran the South Water Market District. I don't know. Mm, okay. Uh, Ron Frey, to get any thoughts out of their head about telling. I have no idea what the heck that means. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Uh, be yes, I knew with... Paula Lartz. I knew Paula Lartz. She owned uh, Capital News. She was the mistress of Ruben Sturman. And when he was indicted, he had all these news agencies all over the country that sold pornography. Mm -hmm. And so he told them, put it in your name so it's not in my name because I'm I'm being charged. Well, after it was over, Ruben came back and said, I want my business back. And Paula said, oh, no, it's in my name. <laughs> they tried to kill her a couple times. Oh, and they geez. found their stores and all kinds of stuff. As a matter of fact, Joey Lombardo gave the okay to actually um, go over to Capitol News for Alva Johnson Rogers who was with Marshall Cofano at the time, to firebomb it. And he did. He did firebomb it twice. Wow. I but I didn't know Paula. Paula lived on a, a small street. I believe it was Scott Street, right behind me on Wells. She had a cigarette boat, and she had a beautiful Mercedes. Nice gal. She finally married uh, Roy. Uh, he was an attorney, Roy May or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was after I was gone. But her security called me when she had a problem. Hmm. Interesting. I've never even heard of the name Paula Lawrence. So thanks for that question. Uh, um, be she ran a concert. lot. Of, she ran a lot of peep shows. She owned a lot of things. They would go in to any store that wasn't uh, controlled out of state, like in uh, Iowa or someplace, and... If it wasn't controlled, they'd put in their peep shows in the back room and split 50-50. Mm -hmm. Of course, then when the mob got a hold of her, that was it. It was Mike Galitta that went and put the arm on her. Wow. A lot of, a lot of competition in the uh, porn business, huh? A $360 billion a year business. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have comp? You know, I mean, come yeah, on. They go with, like I said before, they go where the money's at. Yeah, yeah. I was in the porn business for a little while. <laughs> Tell me about it. I want to hear well, this. I had a, my, 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 my uh, acting name was uh, Monster Rob Von Hugenstein. And I. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, outfit Boss. Do you, uh, Red, do you know when Tony Spilatro was made in the outfit? No, I really don't know exactly. I really don't. Okay. I know he was. Uh... I know he was made somewhere around 1970, somewhere around 1970. Um, it may have had to do with uh, uh, one of the murders that he committed, but he also was very close to Milwaukee Phil. They were like right. that. Right. Phil yeah. and him got along really well. Uh, any truth to Giancana having an affair with Spilatro's wife? I've been asked that before. Somebody asked that on Facebook. And okay. it's written in somebody's book that they wrote. Um, I don't think so. I really don't. I, do I know about it? No. I don't have any first hand. I, what did Tony going to sit down and say, yeah, my wife's having a, an affair with the old man or something like that? <laughs> no, it didn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of. <laughs> okay. Uh, Blake wants to know the real reason for the fall of the Chicago outfit. In your opinion, I mean, I've explained it in, in a different words in the past that basically, you know, the fall of it was the politicians took over everything the mobsters were doing. But go ahead, put it in your words, Red. I think the fall was they got very sloppy and they lost their political clout. They lost Rody. They lost, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Marcy, Pat Marcy. They lost all their political pull. And then the politicians that were looking at the mob, don't forget the RICO statute came out, said, wait a second, we can get rid of the mob and then we can run things. And yeah. I think it not only happened in Chicago, but it happened all over the United States. Yeah, sure. In, in all of the uh, all of the different cities and whatnot, kind of all 
But, you know, like Frank Galati used to say, though, these politicians nowadays that make him and those guys look like angels. <laughs> they would. <laughs> like, well, not so. only that, if they're charging a street tax, the mob was charging a street tax. These guys, they vote themselves a new salary because they're in office. They can take, okay, we're going to get more salary. And what do they do? They raise your taxes. Yeah. How are no, you going to avoid your income tax, your and, property tax? It's tax. I've got to pay it. It's been going on since the beginning of time. Tedford Van Patriot, thank you, brother. Thank you. That's awesome, man. Appreciate your uh, your donation there. And uh, when you grow up, you're going to be a porn star, and then you can, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Red 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 will promote you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Did you ever meet uh, Hugh Hefner? I'm just coming off my the top of my head. I'm just wondering if you ever no, met him. No, I saw him once uh, on by his uh, the Playboy building, mm -hmm. but I never met him. No, Marshall okay. met him. He used to talk about it. Marshall tried to arm him, put the arm on him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Huh. I, I thought I thought you know one day Frank Collada said that to me. I asked him you know somebody asked in one of the the videos if he knew Hugh Hefner. And I'm sure you can type Hugh Hefner and Collada and the video will come up. Uh, and uh, he he said that something like, no, I didn't. But if I did, I'd have had the muscle on him. And yep. I laughed like, oh, yeah, like he's joking around, you know, kind of thing. No, he, he really Everybody wouldn't. wanted to put the muscle on him. Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted to. Yes, exactly. So. Uh, Especially his Playboy clubs, you know. They really wanted a piece of the action on all these Playboy clubs. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Mike Ditka, you know, uh, yeah. his nightlights. <laughs> Ditka only owns 10% of that. The rest of it's owned by different investors. <laughs> right, of course, right. Uh, oh, my gosh. Tedford Von Longdong. That's a great, that's a great, that's a great name, man. Whenever you get into the business, I, Tedford I really Von like Longdong. Your, I really like your mugshot guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mexico's in charge of California nowadays. The whole West Coast really is, is what John Allen said. Thank you, John. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, okay, so American Gangster. Well, let's go back to Frank the German, even though that was last week's topic. But uh, did he have a favorite gun he liked to use for killing people? Not one particular one. He had a, pr a favorite model. Um, he used to get rid of the weapons after he, he actually committed the murders. But uh, he liked, he preferred a Colt Woodsman or a, um, a Colt High Standard. It was a semi automatic 22 caliber. He liked okay. the 22 caliber. Uh, Tyson's Acosta. Did Red Wamet ever meet or deal with either Jimmy and then. Iandino. Iandino, thank you. Iandino. Or, or which, Fifi uh, Bouchieri. Yes, I met Fifi. F Fiori Bouchieri. Fifi. He was on the south side. I mentioned him. He he was uh, he got along with Jimmy Couture and that crew. You know, when they were having their wars out there over chop shops. Mm -hmm. But he also ran uh, whorehouses and everything else. Kurt Hansen was really involved with him. That's how okay. I, I actually met him was through Kurt Hansen. Did you ever meet Count Dante? I don't even know who Count Dante is, but no, he's a guy. Never mind. <laughs> he's a guy on Facebook that I got in an argument with. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. All right, so that's, I'm going. Who the hell's Count Dante? I put so. his father in prison. Um, okay, gotcha. So let's see here. Outfit boss Red was. Uh, who was the Grand Avenue boss before Lombardo? Milwaukee Phil. Phil Alderisio was. Okay? Right. And uh, Ryan Brown, thank you, pal. Uh, your questions, why did Mad Sam want to kill Kurt Hansen? He had killed one of his collectors. Sam was out on the south side, and uh, he put the arm on his brother for a, a whorehouse that they had above a bar. And... Uh, Sam had grabbed Kenny Hansen, his brother, who owned the place. And uh, he said, what happened to my guy? And Kirk came up and whacked the guy. And uh, 
Sam Juan Kirk did after that, but he also wanted Kenny did after that. He gave Kenny a slide. I did a video about that. Hmm. Scared, scared, scared me. Sam was a scary guy. He had uh, a lot of people around him. He had muscle around him all the time. So, so in the description of the video, by the way, guys, you can click in the video description and uh, you'll see a link to Red's channel. And you can go over there and you can check out some of the uh, some of the uh, videos that he's talking about. Uh, so you might like them. You might like them. You, you, you actually might. They're they're short. They're all like uh, maybe um, six to eight minutes long, uh, short stories, and uh, they're they're all very good. So, uh, Leanne, hey Leanne's rolling along in her eighteen wheeler, listening today. I love wants, Leanne. She wants to know uh, what was the favorite celebrity that you've met. Don Rickles. Don Rickles, yeah, Don yes. Rickles. You tell t tell a story quickly about Don Rickles and uh, uh, <laughs> Stallone and all that, please. You got to okay. hear the story. I was uh, I was in Vegas. I was staying at the Stardust, and they gave me tickets to go to uh, Circus Circus. And I got criticized by somebody last time I told the story, but they sent a courtesy car to pick me up to drive me across the street to Circus Circus. And there was these two big guys with me. And I didn't know who they were. They were just assigned to me. And so as I was getting into the theater part, they lift up the theater rope, you know, that red rope that's along there that you lift up and it holds people back, and they walk me backstage. And I met Don Rickles. And he was a – he played himself. The guy made a joke out of everything. He laughed. He was funny. He was a, he shook my hand with two hands. When he shook my hand, he, you know, he, he grabbed it with both hands and shook it. Very nice guy real easy going. He gets out on stage and I learned a lesson of my life. You never heckle somebody that's on the stage. I said something back to him and he put, he told the, the guy with the light spotlight, he said, we got a comedian in the room, put the light on him. So he put the light on me and I figured that was going to be it, you know, and he said, come on, bring him up on stage after a while. And Stallone was looking at me because he was he wanted to know who this guy was that got in because he was there with a lady. I don't know who she was. It wasn't his wife, I don't think. But at any rate, um, <laughs> uh, he didn't like it. And and they rolled out a table for me and put it right in front. Anybody that's in Vegas, if you're in the, the stage is high. So you're kind of like that looking up. But uh, they put a phone there and a lamp and everything, big high booth. And uh, kind of blocked the viewers behind me. They made it real nice for me. So I go up on stage. And I'm following this light because it's dark in there. You've got to just follow the spotlight. That's the only place you can walk. And I didn't figure anything would be bad. But anyway, I get on stage. And it got worse. Because he would say something to me. And then he put the mic in front of my face and, and pull it back. And I never got a chance to answer. And finally, he made a real jerk out of me. And he put the mic on the floor with a spotlight on it and said, let him be your entertainer. He says, he says, I'm going to quit the show. And he walked off stage and he loved me. <laughs> I had a kink in my cheek from laughing. I was laughing. I'm looking at these floodlights. I can't see the audience. I'm looking at these floodlights. I didn't say a word. And finally he came back and he picked up the mic. And he said, you had enough of show business? <laughs> I just laughed. <laughs> and I found my way to the steps, got down, and, and got back, back to my table. On the oh, way of working out, when the show was over, he walked up to me and he says, I was just goofing around. Did you have a good time? And I said, yeah, I really had a good time. I'll never forget this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, guys, we're going to wrap up here, but we're going to um, uh, answer one more question. And then I, wanna, I also want to do a little poll here, okay? Um, so... First off, uh, Red, did you ever meet Mad Sam? Yes. Okay. Um, at least a dozen occasions. I think maybe next week we'll do Red, we'll do Mad Sam, if, and we'll we'll go through all the occasions. He's and an interesting we'll talk topic. He's but an here, here's what I want you guys to do uh, out there is uh, I want you to in the comment section right now push the number one. If you think that his name's pronounced 
Sam DiStefano. And press the number Di two. Stefano. Di Stefano. Press number two if you think it's Di Stefano, okay? Di Stefano, number one. Di Stefano, number two. Okay, so I want to see it really right right now, guys. You got to do it right now. Push number one, Di Stefano. Number two, Di Stefano. Okay, uh, and let's see what we get here because uh, I, I had a lot of a lot of uh, <laughs> number Some two, 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 all that, two. So they used to say Sammy D. We called him Sammy D. Right, right. Okay, Will says two. Tim says two. Great Scott says two. Outfit Boss says two. Luminous Grin says two. Tony Montana says one. So, uh, Gina, <laughs> two. Kissy Cat says one. Philip Wright says number one. Sonny Black says two. Kevo, two. American Gangster, 12. 12. One and two. <laughs> he listened. Yes, he's unbelievable. You know, by Very the way, two, two plus two, two plus two doesn't equal four anymore because that's racist. You know that, right? <laughs> no, it's true. Two plus two could be five. So... Uh, <laughs> Luminous Grin, H. Perfect. Thank you, Luminous Grin. I appreciate that. Hey, guys, push the like button. Push the prescribe button if you haven't already. Join the channel. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. But, but look, something really cool is about to happen here in 25 minutes. In 24 minutes, a video is premiering on another channel that I run. It's called Vegas Specialty Tours, which is also... Um, uh, the name of my tour company uh, out here that I'm an owner of. And Is that the one about to sign? Yes. Oh, that, you, folks, you got to watch. Yes. So I, I showed it to uh, I showed it to Red um, uh, earlier just as a, a little check this out and tell me what you think. Uh, but here, I'm going to put it in the uh, I'm going to put it in the chat right there. So there's a link in the chat on um, in the comments. And then you can also look in the description of the video, and there's a link in there to go watch the video. We're going to be premiering it in 20 minutes, and uh, you guys can comment. You, you did Listen, a lot of research on that. This, this video is is 25 amazing facts. Okay, that you would never know. <laughs> that you would never know. Okay, about the "Welcome to Las Vegas" sign. Uh, now, uh, I didn't think that it could actually. <laughs> There could be all these facts about the Las Vegas sign, but there are so many. I uh, made a video about it, and uh, and you guys, hey, go over there and check I it out. I want to say something, Adam. Oh, please, please, please do. These, um, uh, the coins on top, the silver dollars. Oh, yeah. The thing that really amazed me about those, you talked about it a couple times, is there's seven of them. Lucky seven. Yeah. How many slot machines have lucky seven on them? And it didn't even come to me till I, I knew about the sign. Yeah, I didn't know about it either. I mean, you guys, normally it says welcome up there in the Leon circles. And yes, uh, it does oh, say those welcome. 19, 1922, 1920. They're all, yeah, they're all 1922 silver peace dollars. Oh. And the, the artist of the sign drew them in there. And they have the words liberty, in God we trust. In God we trust is written seven times on the Welcome to Las Vegas sign. Nobody knows this stuff. Anyway, uh, check it out. It's going to be coming on, like I say, in about uh, 20 minutes. And uh, I will, uh, I think it's going to be coming on in 20 minutes. Yeah, premieres. There's three people waiting. And I think, when does it premiere? It says, yeah, 3.30. So, yeah, it comes on in 20 minutes. Anyway, guys, thank you all, number one. For sticking around and for listening to Red and I and for joining and participating and uh, uh, and for those of you that made contributions, uh, to Teddy Von God Patriot, yeah, thank God you very you. much, uh, all of you. Really do appreciate it, Ryan Brown. Um, it was uh, it was nice of you guys to do that and to join us. Anyhow, um, thanks again, Red, for coming on on Redness Day. <laughs> I'll be here we'll next Wednesday, I think. We'll do see next redness, next redness, next redness day. We'll uh we'll be over here and uh we'll talk. We'll do Mad Sam. All right, we'll do Mad Sam next next Wednesday. Uh and I'll scoop together some stuff over the next week and we'll have some fun. So anyhow in between your tours. Yeah, in between the tours. I'm starting to get some people are calling up and you know, I'm taking some friends out around town. So uh, I'm getting some of those, and that's that's uh, that's kind of cool. I'm I'm, I'm enjoying taking people around and and having fun. Friends, so, <laughs> friends, they're friends. All right. So anyway, um, thanks guys so much once again. 
Uh, we appreciate you guys being here. Red, thank you for being here. You're welcome. I appreciate you, man. You guys have a great day. And uh, thanks again for watching my vlog.